Hello everybody, I hope you're having a really fantastic day. Today I'm going to share with you all about my making plans for the winter. In the last video I did, I did an audit of my autumn winter wardrobe and as part of that process I write a list of the things I want to find, buy or make. And today I'm going to share with you what I am planning on making. I've never done a video like this before, please let me know what you think of it in the comments below and give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of this kind of content. I have a dedicated crafty Instagram called at handmade years and I'll make sure that's linked down below if you want to follow my journey of things I have made and am making and I'm going to make. I mostly crochet and sew and I dabble in a few other areas. I'm a very beginner sewist and I would say I'm kind of like an advanced beginner crocheter. I haven't crocheted for very long but I can do fairly complicated stitches. However, there's so many different kinds of crochet out there and I really want to try some different kinds of crochet this winter. Also with my sewing, I have um, a Sew Liberated course that I will be doing this winter and I'll share a bit more about that in a minute. So I want to start with crochet simply because it's the thing I probably spend the most time doing and it's the thing at the minute that I am the most obsessed with. So first things first, the project I am currently finishing off is this Crochet Sea Glass Tea by Wool & Pine Designs and I'm just putting the bottom edging on. I've had to actually unpick it and redo it in a smaller needle size, which is fine. It actually doesn't take too long to do the ribbing. Oh no, it's not ribbing, it's like edging. I love this. I think it's so gorgeous. It's taken a very long time to do because you're sort of making this new material and each row you're changing colors and every stitch you're changing colors it is a labor of love and a piece of art and I am really proud of it. I think it's probably going to take me another couple of weeks to finish. I tend to crochet in the evenings and I tend to only do half an hour because I don't really ever want my body to think it's too much and one of the reasons I crochet instead of knit is because I have a tendency to get some RSI and crochet I find a lot easier but knitting I don't know if it's to do with like the length of my muscles or like lengthening my limbs rather the lack of size in my muscles potentially and it's definitely to do with the way that I learn how to knit I know there are several different ways of knitting and I probably need to learn the other style but I am obsessed with crochet I actually learned how to crochet about 11 years ago when I was in Australia and I learned how to make little granny squares I just I, I stopped doing it for a long time but it's the, the easiest thing to pick back up again and it's such an easy skill how to learn I find so many people message me on my handmade years profile and say oh I'd love to do that and I'm like it's so so easy to start crochet so so easy it's just one hook it's so simple so i'd really recommend this pattern if you are an advanced beginner and you have a lot of time and some leftover yarn i actually purchased all of the yarn for this because i didn't have any spare yarn but i also have another project that i have in mind to do with all of that yarn so it won't get wasted and yeah it was fingering weight four ply yarn which i didn't really have any of i was mostly using dk and worsted weight one of the things I wrote on my list after the audit was brown. I did that after the last autumn winter one and I did it at this autumn winter one and I still haven't made something with a beautiful brown colour. Part of the reason is that yarn is super expensive and I want to make sure I get a colour I really really like. If you have any suggestions for a lovely like chocolate brown yarn please let me know. So I think I'm going to make this which is the Evelyn cardigan by Lily Bjorn Crochet and I think that's going to look really stunning. I've got the kind of contrast colour already, this kind of aqua turquoise and I did buy this which is the Cascade Yarns Superwash Wave. I can't remember which shade it's called, what shade it's called. I don't remember what shade that is but it has got a bit of brown in it and it's got that kind of tealy turquoisey thing going on in there. So I actually think that would look really nice with that together with like that being the highlight colour so I may do that. So I think that's probably what I'm going to make. I always need more cardigans. Cardigans are my absolute go-to in England where the weather can change and when you're going in and out of rooms. Just it's so practical and I wear them with all of my dresses. So the other thing I'd love to make is this candy pullover by Sandra Gutierrez who is Nomad Stitches on Instagram and I just love the lace work detail of it. 
However, I am not sure what yarn to use. I've got this, which is some spin cycle yarns, which is gorgeous, but I only have this one skein because it's super expensive. I do not know. Perhaps I could use that for like the ribbing and then use like a light white, creamy kind of natural wool color for the body, maybe. I don't know. It's so, so pretty and I desperately want to use it, but I also want to be really careful what project I use it for. It would look really pretty with that kind of delicate lace for it to be a really light color, but it also has to be practical for my life. I also have quite a lot of this kind of beigey color, which would look really, really nice in that pullover. So perhaps I'll do that. And I think it's a pattern that would whip up quite quickly. So there's a couple of patterns in the Morit Autumn Winter 2021 magazine that I would love to make. The first are the Spree Mittens. Look at those. I'm thinking they probably wouldn't take too long to make up. And I'm also thinking it probably, I've probably got some yarn that I could use for that. And I've definitely got enough yarn because you wouldn't need quite so much for the mittens. The other one I'd like to make is this Glore Shawl, which would highlight the yarn that you've got so, so well. So you'd have to find, I'd have to find a yarn that was really, really stunning and had quite a lot of colors in it for my sake, but that also somehow went with everything. But it is so, so beautiful. And it's Tunisian lace crochet and it's just, gorgeous so i'd like to do that but i think one that would take me a long time and two it would be quite expensive for the yarn so i'm thinking carefully about which color and which yarn i'm going to use before i start on that project the other book i love is this colorful crochet knitwear by sandra gutierrez which who i already mentioned i mean look at this so so beautiful and the one i have earmarked for this winter is the lagom pullover look at this Oh my gosh. I actually really like the colours there, but it's a bit too icy for my sort of colour palette, but so, so beautiful. So I need to think about, again, which colours I would use and I don't have yarn for that yet. So perhaps my project for this winter is to work out which yarn I would like colour-wise to make the pullover rather than potentially starting it, but we'll see. I might have a couple of the yarns already, but I definitely don't have the whole set for how I want it to look. So next I'm going to talk about my sewing plans for the winter and I am very much a beginner sewist I feel like in comparison to my crochet even though I've been sewing a lot longer I actually used one of my first paychecks to buy a sewing machine and I have still got that machine. It is in fantastic working order and that's probably simply because it doesn't get that much use and when it is used it pretty much just does straight stitches. It had its first service in the summer and it is working beautifully. I am a very, very self-taught sewist. I have a lot of gumption when it comes to sewing stuff and I just sort of go with it and think, well, what's the worst that can happen is I have to like unpick it. You can't really, there's nothing that can go wrong unless you cut it wrong. So I have learned mostly by fixing my own mistakes and working out what I like and what I don't like. However, this winter, I shall be doing a Sew Liberated course online. I'm making one of their pinafores and that hopefully will teach me some techniques that I don't already know and give me more of the language that I need in order to sound like I have a clue what I'm talking about. Because I don't really, I have made it all up. <laughs> so the first thing I wrote on my autumn audit list was wide leg wool trousers. So. I so desperately wanted them. I went on eBay. I'd actually been following a few pairs for a while and I made the purchase and got these beautiful Hobbs brown tweed wool trousers and they are gorgeous. The leg is perfection. However, they are a smidge too big and I've hummed and hard about taking them in myself because I've really successfully taken in some jeans before, actually like twice, and I know how to do it but there's something about the way these are made. And I think it's because they've got a lining that's making me feel like it's gonna be a bit more complicated and I want them to last forever and fit just perfectly. So I think I'm gonna take them to the tailor. I've got a really lovely tailor who I haven't been to for a very long time because I mostly do it myself, but I will go and see what the price is and hopefully get them sorted. They are so beautiful and I will wear them 
all the time this winter for sure. So now onto what I'm actually going to make. I'm gonna make another pair of pajamas because I don't have a pair of long pajamas, like a full set. I have long pajama bottoms and I have tops, but I don't have anything matching and I'd love to make a pair of matching pajamas for the winter. So I made the short version of this pattern in the summer with an old duvet that was pink and you saw that in my last video i have loved them and worn them loads so i'm gonna make it out of this old duvet cover that i found thrifting which is just so much fun and i really really like it and it's a really soft brushed cotton and it shouldn't take too long or be too complicated so hopefully that will be done soon enough so the other thing i'd really like to sew is the m7969 again I have made one of these already and it was made from this beautiful indigo blue batik print kind of tablecloth and I wore it all the time last winter and through the summer. It's such a versatile dress for me, it gets such a lot of use in my wardrobe and I'd love to add another one, maybe even two, to my wardrobe. I even have made it short, I've made a little white blouse which I really really like but I probably will get more use out of the dress because it's so lovely to wear with a fat jumper on the top and have the little skirt flipping out and like tights and boots and it's such a really cute look and it works really well in my wardrobe. My problem with wanting to do make another dress is the fabric choice and I think what I might end up doing is purchasing some fabric because I've been keeping my eye out but to buy enough fabric for this dress is quite complicated, it requires quite a lot, the sleeves where they're so billowy take a lot of fabric. So I am thinking that I will be purchasing some from Merchant and Mills, but that is quite expensive, it's an investment. But on a dress, I know one, I can make all right, and I'm not gonna mess it up, and two, I'm gonna get so much use out of, I think it will be a really good investment. And there's so much fabric on their website that I just love. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna just see if there's enough of this. This is a beautiful cotton tablecloth, but it's round and I think there's not going to be enough of it but it's so so beautiful it may make a kind of shorter top version but I really would love to have that as like a flippy skirt but this might turn into something else it's been in my pile like my stash for about I know a year and I still haven't made anything with it yet because I love it so much I don't cut into it it would make a lovely m7969 but I don't think there's enough of it and then the other two options I have, I definitely have enough fabric for, is a couple of like really ancient vintage corduroys that my mum handed down to me. And one is this, and the other is this. Neither of which I am obsessed with, but both of which would actually make like really cute somethings. I'm actually thinking that both of these would make like a really cute kind of quilted like a fat jacket or maybe I'll make both of them into an M7969 and wear them all winter not sure so the other craft project that I will be doing this winter will be another of my beautiful braided rag rugs I have only made one and I'm desperate to make another one partly because I have so 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 much fabric and also because I just love this thing there's something really really precious and special about this it took so much time to make it and it just has all these different fabrics in it that have so much meaning and it's so lovely that they haven't been lost and like stained old kids clothes go into this like vintage scraps from projects made like years ago some of my old clothes that just have been too worn to turn into anything else have gone into this and it is just the most lovely thing to have in the house so I want to make another one probably just I will always be making one of these rag rugs I made it with Ilka White and I'll make sure to link her down below if you're interested in learning how to do it it's a slightly different technique than a traditional rag rug because it's braided and her course was absolutely phenomenal so thank you for watching this video i would absolutely love to know what you are making this winter whether you crochet sew knit weave rugs what you do with your time in terms of crafting and if you're not crafty at all i would love to encourage you to have a look at picking up a new skill if you've watched this video and you don't really craft i know you're interested so just give it a shot and be a bit brave. Also, if there are any questions about anything that I've mentioned, please do ask. I'm always happy to answer your questions.
and that's all for today folks thank you so much for watching this video have a fabulous rest of your day bye